Oh, excuse me. I look drunk. I had esophageal cancer. I'd rather burp all the time than fart all the time. Cancer. Well, I named my tumour Frank. Oh, Frank's actually the bollocks again. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday the 9th. It's quarter past 10 and uh, today is treatment day. Blah, blah. I, I hate talking about it. But this is not going to be a depressing vlog. That's not my energy. That's not my vibe. I have an intense desire to create content around being a cancer patient with a terminal diagnosis. I don't know how relatable uh, terminal cancer is, but when I have looked for people to relate to in a similar boat, I really haven't found very much and it can be lonely. So this is obviously for me. I hope to find a little bit of meaning in vlogging about being a cancer patient, but it's also for that person who, if someone goes looking for someone going through this, then maybe they'll find my vlog. Maybe they'll think I'm an absolute bloody weirdo, but they'll find my vlog. And in an ideal world, they might either feel less lonely, they might find whatever it was that they were looking for, something to relate to. So, um, speech over, let's get ready with me. I know, jarring idea, getting ready for cancer treatment, but I wear makeup when I go to get treatment because I it makes me feel good about myself. I actually did a practice of this yesterday when I was putting on my makeup. I didn't like record myself, but I like practiced talking about what I was putting on. And I realized that I can't bloody multitask. So this isn't going to be useful get ready with me for you. Um, I mean, what am I putting on right now? It's a Bare Minerals moisturizer. I mean, that's all I need to know. Do you need to know anymore? Does anyone care? No, you don't. So, I mean, that's fine with me. Let's just, let's just get ready with me. Let me put on my war paint so that I feel good for the day. What, can I, what stories can I regale you with with regards to stage four cancer? Well, I named my tumor Frank. It was some Wednesday in November, 2016. It was the same day that Trump got elected. So, I mean, it was a shit day for me, but it was also a shit day for a lot of other people. And my dad and I, God bless him, like no dad should ever have to sit in a meeting where their daughter is told she has stage three cancer. But anyway, we left the doctor's office on that very fateful morning, but we were walking back to the car and I don't know if it was God or if it was like the universe or if it was just my subconscious, but the name Frank, like someone in my head said it like really loud. It was just, his name is Frank. And I turned to my dad and I said, my tumor's name is Frank. And my, <laughs> my dad laughed. And I just remember in that moment, that was like a pivotal moment for me in cancer tree, in like the at the start of my cancer journey. I was like, right, I've just managed to make my dad laugh about 20 minutes after he was told his eldest child has very serious cancer. And if that's, if I can do that, then that's the way we're bloody gonna roll with it. We're gonna, we're gonna laugh our way through this. And it did, like calling my tumor Frank made everything about having a tumor much easier because I could just blame everything on Frank. If I was having pain eating, cause there's a junction, there's a tumor at the junction of my stomach. It was like, oh, oh Frank's actually the bollocks again. Frank was right at the, the junction of my stomach and my esophagus, like your typical man spreader, like, awkwardly sat and spread himself between two very important organs. Like I no longer have an esophagus, much of an esophagus or a stomach. They had to remove both of them to take the prick out. What am I doing next? I can't multitask. Okay, so that was a moisturizer, but I think I want a little bit, I think I want a little bit more coverage today. So I love the following. I love Bobbi Brown Weightless Foundation. You know, if you're watching this and you want to send me some stuff. I have 500 subscribers now, so you know. <laughs> I mean, do I call you? Do you, do you wanna call me? How does it work? This mustn't be a very pleasant experience for you, the viewer. I really, I'm like throwing this on my face. And I'm like soaking myself up for treatment. Bronzer. This bronzer is, oh look, I'm remembering to do stuff. This is good. This bronzer is the Chanel Les, Les Beige, Le Beige, Le Beige, Le Beige. In March of 2018, I had been on a clinical trial for a new type of cancer drug called a, an immunotherapy drug. Where is my concealer? Um, really good concealer. Should I do the like whole hand thing? I don't know if you can see. 
So I signed up to this trial. I was on it for a year. There was a chance that you could get the placebo. It was one in three and it was blind, double blinded. So um, no one knew. Um, but I was going for routine scans. Obviously, sorry, yeah, more paint. Oh, thumbnail. Thumbnail. Um, I had a routine scan uh, on a Tuesday. Like this, you, you must think I just like slap my makeup on, which I do. I'm not pretending to be a makeup you could block. Makeup, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I had esophageal cancer. Burping is like going to be a, like a per perpetual side effect of that. Um, although I'd rather burp, I'd rather burp all the time than fart all the time. Although I can't say I don't do that as well. Anyway. I had the scan on the Tuesday, was flying out to Japan on the Friday to see a friend. My boyfriend and I had planned this big trip. I, you know, I was, I was cancer free for a year. It was time to kind of move on with our lives and celebrate and flying out to Japan. And I'm, I'm in school that Friday morning, fin just finished teaching, getting ready to pack up and go to the airport. All my stuff is in the car, my backpack, my passport. And the hospital calls me and they're like, uh, Holly, prof wants to see you, can you come in? And I was like, yeah, I'm flying out. <laughs> I'm flying to Japan in a few hours. So, I mean, can it wait? <laughs> and the trials nurse was like, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. And um, prof wants to talk to you about your scan. I, I was one of the saddest moments of my life. I, I won't talk about it now because that's not the vibe. But basically I knew, she didn't tell me on the phone. She couldn't, she wasn't allowed, but I knew the cancer had come back. The reason why cancer is able to grow so quickly and you know, spread so insidiously, insidiously, is that a word? Is because it has a protein or in layman's terms, because I'm not a scientist, and um, the way I see it is it's an invisibility cloak. Um, I mean, if we're gonna frame this story in context of anything, let's let's use terminology from Harry Potter. But it was, yeah, so cancer cells have an invisibility cloak. I think it's a protein, but it basically shields the cancer cells from allowing your own immune system to see the cancer. But this drug, this bloody drug, right? It's given to you intravenously, so like chemo. I don't know what the I'm doing. This makeup tutorial is full on stopped. It's turned into, it's raveled into a full on story time. It goes into your body, it finds the cancer cells, it whips that invisibility cloak right off so that your cancer cells are exposed for everybody to see. And then your own immune system, your own bloody immune system, is able to then treat and kill the cancer cells. Your own immune system is able to kill this disease that has plagued humankind for centuries. This, this devastating, terrifying disease. Your own immune system's like, on it. We got it, girl. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're on it. That was the drug that I was on the trial for. Basically, my oncologist was a, was a superhero. He went to the pharmaceutical company that uh, make this drug and said, listen, this girl signed up to your trial and she got the placebo. And now she has 12 weeks to live. She has an inoperable tumor that wouldn't have happened perhaps if she had gone for chemo and not for your trial, but she went for your trial and now she's dying. Her only option is palliative care. You need to give her access to this drug because it is literally her only chance. And even at that, we both know it mightn't work. And the pharmaceutical company were like, I'm sorry, we can't give her this drug. Ethical um, approval for these sorts of things is extremely difficult to get. And so they actually turned him down. But then he went back and was like, no, 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 you, you're not listening to me. Um, you, I'm, I'm going to keep applying for this until you give it to me because um, this girl is 27, you know, she's not supposed to die and you need to, you need to give it to her. So they, they went through all the process of ethical approval and they gave him or me compassionate access to this drug because either it was gonna, I was gonna die anyway from 12 in a few weeks because it, you know, the drug wasn't gonna work. So it wasn't like the pharmaceutical company were gonna lose a huge amount of the drug or it was going to work and it would be incredible data for their trial. So I started that in March 2018, having initially been given three months to live and I am still bloody here. What am I doing? I need mascara. I, I'm on the drug kind of perpetually. They don't know, they really don't know a huge amount about this, this type of drug and how well it works when you come off it. Um, and because my cancer is so aggressive, it'll probably be, this is not, this, I look drunk. I'm like, it'll probably be unaffordable. Um, which is 
obviously a massive amount to deal with when you're 30 years of age and you're a woman and you want to maybe start a family but you can't because you're on a cancer drug and you have to decide are you going to come off the cancer drug and it's a story time for another makeup video. <laughs> and there we have it ladies and gentlemen. Bit of, bit of setting spray if I can find it. I think I'm done. I don't really know. The point is how do I feel? I feel good. <clears throat> I actually feel like because I t told that story in a very kind of positive way and not to diminish the, the, the trauma of it all because obviously, obviously I'm in counselling um, for all of that um, or I was before COVID uh, but I, I think I'm okay. Well, yeah, I feel good and that's the most important thing. And for those of you who came here for the PhD content and you didn't get it today, um, I would not be doing my PhD if it wasn't for the fact that I'm a cancer patient. I am a trained high school or secondary school teacher but because of COVID, and the fact that I'm in this very high vulnerable category of people. I couldn't go back to school. So I'd always wanted to do a PhD. Um, I'd had a project picked out for years. Like I picked a project out about five years ago. I knew what I wanted to do. And I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna make lemons out of this, lemonade out of this situation. And I found an awesome supervisor in a university in Dublin and I started my PhD. So if that's not bloody, Positive vibes, I don't know what is. It's time to go get treatment for cancer. At least I look good. If you're still here listening to me ramble on, thank you. I hope you're being kind to yourself. Check that inner voice. If you want to keep up with both my PhD journey, cancer journey, or makeup tutorials, click subscribe, go on. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. I've gotta go. Bye guys.